Here are the last uh, half or, or so, maybe third of the lines in Amores 1.1, the very first, the introductory poem to Ovid's work. And, um, and he, he's struggling with what to write. He wants to write about warfare. He wants to write, about, uh, wants to write an epic poem. In dactylic hexameter, every line is the same number of feet, six, uh, but he can't. Cupid has, has, is coming at him, and he doesn't have a choice here. So in line 19, um, Ovid says, the, the matter, the subject matter to me is neck opta is not suitable to lighter uh, numbers, lighter meters. And so the other way of saying this, when we have this, this possessive adjective, this, this dative adjective, uh, excuse me, um, personal pronoun, with the verb to be, um, this is a dative of possession. So the other way of saying this is I have. So there is to me or, or I have. And in this case, nec mihi est, um, I do not have material suitable for lighter numbers. Um, and then either a boy or a girl. Now we're still gonna take the neck, right? So there is not to me either a boy or a girl. So perhaps we could take this negative and extend it to the two outs here. So nor do I have a boy or a girl nor is there a boy or a girl to me. And then the girl is described as compta, adorned or dressed or arranged. And then Ovid is using what's called an accusative of respect. So she is dressed or, or, or arranged in respect to her long hair. And so the way that I usually translate this compta with the accusative of respect is to pretend that this perfect passive participle is active, almost as if the verb is deponent. So maybe here the girl uh, dressed uh, or having arranged her long hair, or perhaps maybe having been dressed in uh, or dressed in, in uh, arranged or, or adorned with her long hair. I had complained and I think what he's saying here is I'd com I had complained or I had been complaining about all of this when immediately he, so this is Cupid, and these are ablative here, saluta pare tra, from his opened quiver chose spicula. So literally points, but we know that these are arrows, the synecdoche arrows made in exitia man literally into, but maybe for my destruction, this sort of accuse this sort of purposeful accusative construction there. And he bravely, and there's uh, some, some mockery going on there, he bravely lunaw it, so he made it lunar, right? He bent it back. He bent back his curved bow on his knee and deeks it and said, what you sing, what you would sing, O Bard, receive your work. So let's put that in a better word order. O Bard, O Wates, receive the opus which you would sing. Receive the, the work which you would, would sing or produce, write. So Ovid's response is, O miserable me, that boy had sure arrows, sure in the sense of like well-aimed or effective arrows. I am burning and love is ruling in my empty heart. So empty, I guess, because he, he doesn't have a girlfriend to, to fill it. To me, the work, so my work, the work to me, and then this is not surgit, it's surgot. So this is the present subjunctive, same with dot. It's not recedit, it's recedot. So not my work rises, but may my work rise, or let my work rise in six numbers. So six 
maybe feet here sounds better and six feet and may it settle may it sit in five so instead of dactylic hexameter we're going to be writing in uh, elegiac couplets a dactylic with six and a pen and a pentameter uh, or hexameter with six and then a pentameter with five goodbye wars and these wars are described as ferrea so ironclad or maybe wars of iron harsh maybe wars with your rhythms with your modis so gird or put on or or, or adorn my golden my yellow blonde temple temples literally with myrtle from the seashore and so I know that looks masculine but it's actually feminine which is common with trees and plants and that's why that's litorea O muse who must be so this is a gerundive here describing the muse O muse who must be measured out through 11 feet so again not not 12 not six and six but six and then five through 11 feet 